In this particular video, we're going to look for another quotient group. This time, we're going to let our big group be um, S4, and we're going to let H be a cyclic subgroup generated by the permutation 1 goes to 2 goes to 4. Now, the very first thing that I want to do in this video is, of course, find all of the elements of H. Well, that's not very hard. If you uh, look at the um, powers of 1 goes to 2 goes to 4, you wind up getting the permutation itself. And when you uh, square that permutation, you get the permutation 1 goes to 4 goes to 2. And because um, this is a 3 cycle, that's a 3 cycle, when we cube it, we just get the identity permutation. So um, this is our subgroup H. It's important to realize that the size of H is 3. Of course, the size of S4 is 24. And uh, let's see, that needs to be erased. The size of S4 is 24. And these two things together say that we should have eight left cosets of H. And of course, what we want to do is, again, we're going to let um, G mod H, which in this case would be S4 mod H, be the collection, um, in other words, the set of left cosets of our particular subgroup. And our uh, question, again, is going to be, can we find a, a binary operation on the set of left cosets that makes the set of left cosets into a group. Well, the very first thing that we have to do is we have to find that list of all of the left cosets. And so I want you to stop the video right now and find out, uh, just find, calculate all eight of the left cosets of H. Okay, hopefully you've done that. And if you've done that, you should get this list of the eight cosets. Now, your names for these cosets might be slightly different. And I do want to point out, for instance, that this um, second left coset could have been called the uh, coset to four times H, or it could have been called the coset 1, 4 times h. Because it turns out that if you take any of these left cosets, any one of the elements of the left coset can be used as a representative of the coset. And so um, we have different names for each and every one of these cosets. The second coset, of course, could in a similar way be labeled um, 1 goes to 2 goes to 4 goes to 3 times h, or it could be labeled as um, 1 goes to 4 goes to 2 goes to 3 times h. And you can do that with all of the, the other, um, you could do that with all of these other eight um, left cosets as well. Now, again, the, uh, and if, and it's worth stopping the video and checking your work to make sure that you do have all eight of the cosets correctly. Well, now that we have the list of left cosets for H, the question becomes, can we find a binary operation that will turn the set of left cosets of H into a group? Well, again, there is an obvious thing to try. There's an obvious idea. And the obvious idea is to take the left coset alpha H and the left coset beta H, and we're going to 
think about making a new operation on them, and we're going to call it O times. And the obvious choice would be to look at uh, alpha beta times H. Now, it is important to realize that this particular product is in S4, and so we are talking about this set of symbols, meaning first do beta, then do alpha. And this particular set uh, is going to be, well, let's see, H, remember, is the set uh, 1 goes to 2 goes to 4, and the second permutation is 1 goes to 4 goes to 2, and the third permutation is E. So this set is going to be uh, alpha, beta, and 1, 2, 4, and alpha, beta, 1, 4, 2, and then alpha, beta, and in each one of these permutation products, the product is really a function composition, so the composition is going to be done from right to left. Well, we have the same questions that we had in the previous video, with the first question being, is this operation, is this proposed operation of O times well defined? Well, because of the number of uh, left cosets that we have and the fact that permutation multiplication is not commutative, uh, I want to start by simply looking at a particular product. So I'm going to let my first left coset be the coset 1, 2 times h. Now this is the, uh, this is the second coset on the list, and this particular coset is this one right here, and another name for it is 2, 4 times h. So we're going to write that this guy is also equal to 2, 4 times h. And our second coset that we're going to look at is going to be 1, 3 times h. Now that's just the third coset on our list of cosets. That's this one here. And another name for him is 1, 2, 4, 3 times h. So we can also think of this guy as 1, 2, 4, 3 times h. Now the question is, is whether or not we're going to get the same answer if we use this name and this name for our two chosen uh, cosets, or if we use this name and this name for the two co chosen cosets. So we basically have two computations that we need to be looking at. Our first computation is going to be to look at 1, 2, H, O times with 1, 3, H. And when we do that, we're going to get 1 goes to 2 and 1 goes to 3 times H. And uh, when we look at this, we have to do this permutation product, and 1 goes to 3 and 3 is fixed, so... 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, and 1 goes to 2, so 3 goes to 2, and then 2 is fixed by this one, but 2 goes to 1, so 2 goes to 1, and that completes the cycle, and it's important to realize 4 isn't moved by either one of those, and so we have 1 goes to 3 goes to 2 times h, and when we uh, remember that h is this set, when we compose each one of these particular permutations with that one, we wind up getting the set that looks like 2 goes to 4 goes to 3, and 1 goes to 4 and 3 goes to 2, 
And then the third permutation is 1 goes to 3 goes to 2. And it turns out that if we go back and look at our list, that this particular left coset with representative 1 goes to 3 goes to 2 just happens to be number 7 on our list. So this one is the computation that we just did. And so we also want to make a note that this is number 7 on the list. Well, okay, we now need to do the computation using our other names. In other words, I'm going to look at that name and this name for the two left cosets. So our second computation is going to look like 2 goes to 4 times h, o times width, 1 goes to 2 goes to 4 goes to 3 times h. And again, that's supposed to be 2 goes to 4 composed with 1, 2, 4, 3, and we're going to multiply all of that by h. And so again, we have to do the permutation product. And 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 4, so 1 goes to 4. And then we have 4 goes to 3 and 3 is fixed, so 4 goes to 3. And 3 goes to 1 and 1 is fixed, so that completes the cycle. Just double checking about 2. 2 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 2, so this permutation product does fix 2. And of course, we're going to compose that with every element in H. And when we do that, the set that we get turns out to be 1, 2, 3. And the second element is 1 goes to 3 and 2 goes to 4, a pair of 2 cycles. And the last element is going to be 1 goes to 4 goes to 3. Now, when we go back and look at our previous list of left cosets, we're going to find out that this one, 1 goes to 2 goes to 3, happens to be the representative for coset number 6. In other words, this is the set that we get when we look at 2, 4H, O times with 1 goes to 2 goes to 4 goes to 3 times H. And this is a pickle because these two things are not equal. Well, if we just look at what we've been doing, yeah, we know that these are not equal. And what that means is that the answer to alpha h o times with beta h depends on the name for the two left cosets. Well, that's really bad news. In other words, O times is not well defined. And if O times is not well defined, then O times can't be used to make the set of left cosets into a group. Now, that's different than what we had in the previous video. And of course, one obvious question is is the fact 
that as four is not commutative, the problem? Or is there some other more subtle problem? And we will explore that issue in the next couple of videos.